All right, so here we are coming back at week four, right? The last thing that we did was we made a payment to Haley Bros, right? So that kind of took a while uh, to figure out how the discounted work because we paid within terms. So we uh, received a discount. Now, as you can see here, this is the last thing that we left off of on General Journal, page 14. So we are starting a brand new journal. And we are going to go ahead and continue on the next part, which is right here on June 25th. We received a payment from the Corner Bookstore for $53.89 for invoice number 102. All right. So how do we journalize this? We would do debit checking and credit accounts receivable. Yes, right? Because we received money, right? And Corner Bookstore, right? They're making a payment to their accounts receivable, right? That what they owe us. Okay, so checking 10100 And then we have accounts receivable. It's 11 Right? How much was the check written out for? Fifty-three eighty-nine. Fifty-three eighty-nine. Right. Right. Where else can we double check for our invoice for one hundred two? To see if that's the correct amount that they owe us. In this subsidiary ledger. Yes. Yeah, so let's go ahead and take a peek at it first. Let's see. We're looking at the corner bookstore. So here we are, corner bookstore. Invoice number 102, all right? As I mentioned before, we wanna keep tabs of what the actual invoice is. So we originally charged him $63.88. We end up returning um, four broken mugs, all right? Giving him back $9.98. So his check that he owes me should be for $53.89. And that's exactly what we just received. A check for $53.89. Okay. So let's go back to our journal. And what do we need to do next? Let's finish off our journal. I uh, put a note, uh, the corner bookstore, invoice 102, and check. 801. 801? Yes. Oh, no, invoice 102, check number 801. Do accountants have to be good typists? <laughs> uh, yes and no. Um, you know, obviously, if you can type, you know, fast, then you'll get through the journal a lot quicker. Now, I make a lot of typos and error errors, but that's the great thing about using technology is you can correct it at any given time. You know, if you flip over or misspell words, that should be completely fine for you to be able to edit. Um, but, and on top of that, with technology too, we have the ability to just copy and paste yes. to avoid making extra, extra, extra typos. And most likely we'll be using QuickBooks and such, which makes it even easier. Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. I just, I was, I just was curious because my typing was bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next we'll go over to deposits. And we'll enter the amount fifty three eighty nine, and then I left the date and deposits blank because I'm not ready to go to the bank yet. And then we'll have to update our general ledger. Go to 
accounts receivable under assets. Uh, 625 invoice 102 now in JG 15 uh, I'm gonna write the check number on here And then a credit for, or a debit for uh, fifty three eighty nine. Okay, so you're checking them. I'm a, where am I at? Okay, so I'm checking the no, it'd be a credit for fifty three eighty nine, right? Yeah, where it, right now you told me to go to accounts receivable first. Yeah, I know. I, Yeah, I meant to go to checking first. I'm sorry. No worries. No worries. The great no. thing is that there's only two accounts, so. Yeah, you won't. Yeah, it's kind of hard to. And they're in the same spot. Um, they'll bring your balance to 15, 14, 38. Okay, good. And then we'll go up to checking where we should have went first. <laughs> so here we are checking. And I put 625, I put the check number 801 in invoice 102. I cannot type today. Check number 801, invoice number 102. That will debit for fifty three eighty nine. Should give us a credit total of one six five two one two. Go to the Substary Ledger, the corner bookstore, and the customers. I put today's date, 625. My note says payment and check number 801. Voice 102C. And then put JG15. And then let's see, we go over. Yeah, put the amount of 5389 under payment. Which just show me now that I only owe them the 194.10 from the last order. That's it for that one. Good. All right, who wants to do the next one?
we have a purchase order uh, general journal. Um, go into our POs, uh, 625 uh, for PO number uh, 1703.14. Seventeen. Uh, the purchase order number. Okay, seventeen oh fourteen. Okay. okay. Um, from uh, Atlas Coffee Importers, uh, we ordered a uh, hundred and two hundred and fifty pounds again for three eighty. Then since we're still here, our next one's gonna be for same date, 625. Um, from all things ceramic, we ordered a uh, hundred ceramic mugs. Um, I'm gonna put the, like just ceramic mugs at 251 each and a total cost of uh, $251. All right. <clears throat> and, uh, right after that, Albert submits an order for the great restaurant. Uh, we haven't delivered this. It's just an order. Okay. Uh, not generalizing it, but I'm going to make sure he gets credit. So I'm going to the subject jury ledger. Mm hmm. Second ledger. All right. Uh, going commissions. Mm hmm. Uh, I haven't put down dates. I'm bad at that. I don't know if I should. Not yet, because we haven't delivered it to them yet. Okay. Uh, great restaurant. Um, invoice number, I did put 108. Uh, sales amount is $585.87. Uh, no commission yet, and uh, no total commission yet. Okay. Good. Where are you, where are you at right now? The commissions. We're just submitting a soils order. Okay. Let me see. Uh, let's double check that real quick. Five eight five eight seven. Good. Okay. Whoops, so then what did we do here? Uh, 625, we another busy day at the coffee shop. I should need some good money. All right. All right. Um, again, copy and paste everything. Checking, sells medium coffee, sells large coffees, sells supreme medium coffee, sells uh, large supreme coffee, uh, sells ceramic coffee mugs. Uh, and sales tax notes in store sales cost of goods regular cost of goods supreme 
regular coffee, supreme coffee, and store sales. Okay, so there you go. Copy and paste. Gotcha. So every time we do our daily sales summary, we would just basically be copying and pasting all that information and then entering the new numbers, right? Yeah, that way we save time instead of having to type everything all over again. We save time right here by because we know, yeah, because we know what our daily sales is going to look like. We know that we sell these exact items. So in this case, it's just rinse and repeat. Okay. My yeah. internet's going in and out and my and my volume. So that's why I was like, let me just ask my question real quick. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then we get the cogs from, we don't get those numbers until we do our inventory worksheet, until we update it, right? Correct. Okay. Okay, just checking. All right, um, we're going to debit our checking for $2,728.10. Okay, I'm going to save that for my equal sum. I like that. Uh, sells medium coffee, mm-hmm. $525.35. Sells large coffee. Five hundred seven seven dollars and seven cents. Sells medium supreme coffee. I got two D's and medium. Okay, uh, for six hundred dollars, uh, six seventy two and thirty cents. Uh, supreme large, six eighty and fifty five cents. Ceramic mugs for sixty two ninety one, and Uncle Sam's cut of two o seven and ninety two cents. For two seven two eight ten. Um, now on to our ledger. Checking. Making sure I'm in the right account, okay? Okay. Six twenty-five. In-store sales. General Journal fifteen. A debit for two thousand seven hundred twenty-eight dollars and ten cents, which brings our running total to a positive of one thousand uh one thousand seventy-five dollars and ninety-eight cents. Good. Now down to our sales for medium coffee. Hold on one second here. I'm going to reformat my uh, page over here. All right. So uh, 10, 75, 98. Yes. And we're going to go sales. Uh, sells medium regular coffee, six twenty-five. We sold two hundred and sixty-five cups. General Journal fifteen. Credit of five hundred twenty-seven dollars and thirty-five cents, which brings our running total to two thousand eight hundred thirteen and eighty-six cents. Twenty-eight, thirteen, thirty at uh, eighty-six. Good. Now down to sales, regular coffee. Sales, 
$1,600,625. We sold 193 cups. General Journal 15. Credit of $577.07. Brings our running total to $3,000. Four hundred seventy-one dollars and thirty-nine cents. Good. <clears throat> then scroll on down to sales medium supreme coffee. Six twenty-five. We sold two hundred and seventy cups. General Journal fifteen. Credit of six hundred seventy-two dollars and thirty cents. Brings our running total to $3,583.11. Good. Then we'll go to sales large supreme coffee 625 we sold 195 cups general journal 15 credit of $680.55 brings our running total to 3000 Nine hundred sixty-one and fifteen cents. Thirty-nine sixty-one fifteen. Good. Now we're gonna scroll on up to our mugs. Sell ceramic coffee mugs. <clears throat> Six twenty-five. Uh, we sold nine mugs, General Journal 15, credit of $62.91, brings our running total to $958.38. Good. Okay. Everybody's kind of good? That's a yes. I'm good. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm good. All right. Uh, from here, we're going to jump into our inventory. We already know that we got to find the cost of goods. Okay. Let's check. Okay. Good. So 39 and 40. 39. Okay. I have a quick question. Go for it. Did, did we do the sales tax payable? Oh, great. No, we didn't. I was wondering that too. Okay. Yeah. On to liabilities. <laughs> I just know that's why the last trial balance was off because something was missed and I didn't hear you say it, so that's why I jumped in. Sales okay. tax payable. date uh, 625 item in store sales general journal 15 credit for 207 and 92 cents brings our running total to a 1029 and 11 cents now we got it all Regular coffee. Go 
So I am kind of redoing mine right now because of yesterday. I was going to be off a penny. So we uh, got 39 pounds. At a dollar point six three one seven one, which brings the total to sixty three dollars and sixty four cents. And then if we uh, take away uh, thirty nine pounds from a hundred and 36 and a quarter, we end up with 97 and a quarter. And then uh, our total is 158.68. And our current uh, cost per item is $1.63167. Good. Okay. Now on to our spring coffee, six twenty-five. We use forty pounds at a dollar and eighty-four cents. Now, do we have enough? I think we do. No, no, I messed up somewhere. We don't have enough uh, of the last inventory, so what I did was I used the last of it first, which was 36.25 pounds. I went two spots below and put 40, and I uh, did the, uh, the math 40 minus the 36.25 to give me 375. The cost per item will be 1.84 for the 36.25. And the cost per item for the 375 will be 1.86. That should give you the totals of 66.70 and 6.98, which is a uh, grand total of 73.68. I'm catching up. I'm good. You good, Philippe? Oh, I'm following. I'm following. Oh, okay. I didn't. I just want to make sure you're good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So then from there, I go over to my inventory. And I remove the the six twenty. Yep. And then uh, I subtract three seventy five from my next batch. Okay. So here is where you have to be careful, because here I calculated that I sold six dollars and ninety eight cents, right? But here. Nine dollars in what was it? Nine nine sixty eight was it? Plus this number gives me one whole penny extra, right? Because when I originally calculated this, right, it was for uh, what was it? What was my original? Let's see. My original was two three two fifty. This right here gives me. Okay, I don't know why. Uh, hold on, let me let me double check what my numbers were. Was it ninety eight? Okay, yeah, six ninety eight. My bad, six dollars and ninety eight cents. 
if I add these two numbers together, right, 8 plus 3 already gives me 1. So right here, I have one extra penny. Now, in this case, we have to choose which one we're going to round up. And in this case, right, if you pull this and extend it out, it's actually 52 and a half, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. So if I pull it out, 52 and a half. There is half a penny that's being split between the cost of goods sold and the inventory on hand. So therefore, looking at this, we need to make an executive decision, right? Are we going to overstate our assets or are we going to be conservative, conservative and, you know, cost us more expensively or save that one penny? And in this case, like I said, most general rule of thumb is that what you're going to do is you're going to end up rounding up your cost of goods sold because your cost of goods sold is going to be that dollar for dollar amount. Whereas your inventory on hand is going to reflect differently. So what you're going to do here is that obviously you know that there's a penny missing here. So what I'm going to do here on the side is that I'm going to indicate that this is supposed to be for the 225 52 right we're grounding down for this one so then there we go right if we add up those numbers we get 252.50 right that makes our number more sound so this is just a reminder but if i extend it out right i can see where my penny is going into place so in this case my value right now for those um 121 uh pounds is right now currently at 225.52, not 53, right? So let's go ahead. So now I have my journal here. I indicated that this number right here is going to be in fact a uh, one of the numbers where my penny is missing. So I'm gonna highlight it just so that I know that this one isn't the right one. This one's the right one. Or actually, let me let me let me highlight the the other one, excuse me. All right. So that's where you have to really do your calculations really carefully, right? You got to make sure that we started with 50, we minus 8 cents. Why did we end up with 3? All right. So we don't use equal round in the formula. We just manually round it. In this case, you never had an equal round. It was a straightforward, just multiply the two numbers together. Oh, yeah, I know that, but I meant that's what I meant. So you're just off to the side. You manually rounded it instead of using the equal round then, correct? Yeah, I just, yeah, I just punched the numbers in. Because if you did equal round, it would have rounded up to 53. Oh, yeah, I know. And if you do equal round, it, it does equal round down. It don't work either. I've... I already mm -hmm. made a copy of this and went through it a few times. Mm -hmm. So once again, if it works easier, best for you to just do 250, uh, 232.50 minus out that $6.98, right? That way you can get a more rounded number this way. So how Melinda and Nicole were doing it earlier where you're taking that number and you're constantly changing your total cost that way you can prevent from this situation from happening. But for rule of thumb, it's just much easier if you just multiply the quantity times the cost because the cost is going to be always um, constant. But in this case, this is where you have to be very careful about where your pennies go because we had half a penny on both cost of goods sold and on inventory on hand, and we have to choose which one we're going to round up versus round both of them up, causing that half of a penny to be created out of thin air. Okay. All right. So there we have it. Now on to the general journal. General journal. All right. So what was my cost of goods sold for? Regular. After recalculations, I came up with, or we all came up with, uh, $63.64. Uh, 
for cost of goods regular. Cost of goods supreme is going to be seventy three dollars and sixty eight cents. Seven three six eight. Regular coffee again, $63.64. Supreme coffee, $73.68. Notes in store use. Then from there to our ledger. Our, our general ledger, cost of goods. Start with regular coffee. Six twenty-five. We used nine, thirty-nine pounds. General ledger fifteen. Debit of sixty-three. 64 brings our total to six hundred fifty one dollars and seven cents. Six fifty one oh seven. Good. Okay. Then we want to scroll on down to our Supreme Coffee. Six twenty five. Use 40 pounds, general ledger, 15. We use debit, I mean 40 pounds, okay, um, 7368, $17.68, $17 brings our running total to $690.48. Now on to our assets. Six twenty-five. We use thirty-nine pounds. I mean forty pounds. Oh no no no! Wait 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 wait. We're on regular. Regular, yes, thirty-nine pounds. I'm sorry, I jumped in my head. In my head. Uh, general journal fifteen for six three dollars and sixty-four cents, which. I kind of ver gotta go verify. Our current balance is one hundred fifty-eight dollars and sixty-eight cents. And where can we verify that? Inventory. Yes. Yeah, so let's double check this. Is it six one fifty-eight sixty-eight? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Scroll on down to Supreme Coffee. Six twenty-five. We use forty pounds. General ledger. Six 
General Journal 15. For a total of 60, I mean, $73 and 68 cents. Brings our running total of 225 and 52 cents. Ooh, but did we round up? Or no, no. For inventory on hand, no, we round down, remember? But for okay. cost of goods sold, we round up. All right. Because we had that split penny. You have to make a decision. Where do you want to put the penny? In most cases, because we want to make sure that our assets are understated or not overstated, we kept our inventory at a lower cost versus having it at a higher cost. So in this case, we split the penny and we distribute it to your cost of goods sold. Which in this case, right, we made note that in our inventory on hand, we made note that it is 22552, but there's the half a penny. So we want to make sure that it does reflect as 22552. That's the end of that. Now we've got to, after we recorded the inventory, we're going to walk to the bank. Okay, so we're going to make a deposit. Deposit for the 25th. So we take, uh, of course, our $53.25. And I did not go to deposit our... Uh, well, we sold that day, but it should be for $2,728.10. Mm -hmm. Our total deposits should be That's the end of the day. Go home and take a nap. <laughs> All right. Yes, we're completely done with this one. No more transaction. Good. Right? So then what happened on the next day? Alan, help us out. Received an order from Atlas Coffee and Borders, invoice number 370. Received a total of 250 pounds, and we have terms. Okay. So the first thing I did was I went over to my POs to recognize that. Right, because we have now, if we look at our POs, we're pending two things from Atlas Coffee and two things from All Things Ceramics. So in this case, how do we know which one's which? It would be the first one. Yep, because here it's for three seventy two fifty. General Journal. I did a copy and paste for uh, regular coffee, supreme coffee, accounts payable. And while I was up there, I also did the copy and paste for Freightline also.
my date will be 6 26. My regular coffee amount will be 172.50. Cream coffee 200. Sum those two together and you should get 372.50 in your credit. For my notes, Atlas Coffee Importers, invoice 370. And I put the terms 1% 15 net 30. everyone's caught up we can go to assets under the general ledger I'm good I'm good Nicole says she's almost done okay okay she's done okay so we're under regular coffee under assets uh, date 626 Purchase 125 pounds at buck 38 each. GJ 15. Debit for 172.50. 331.18. Yes, that's correct. Spring coffee. Six twenty six. Purchase hundred twenty five pounds. GJ fifteen. And a debit for two hundred dollars. Balance four twenty five fifty two. Hello? Did something happen? Under liabilities. Okay. So we're going to go to accounts payable. All right, good. GJ fifteen. This will be a credit for three seventy two fifty. Balance twenty six fifteen twenty one. Good. Twenty six fifteen twenty one. That that'll finish the uh, general ledger. We'll next go to the subsidiary ledger under the 
Minneapolis coffee importers and their vendors. Page 626. Learn 25 pounds of regular coffee and 125 pounds of supreme coffee. Invoice 370. Did you say we're under Atlas? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. BTJ uh -huh. 15. Back to the terms. should give you a discount date of 11 July and a due date of 26 July. Invoice amount 380. Or no, I'm sorry, 18.46.25. Oops. Yep. Good. Was that 18.46.25? Mm-hmm. 18.46.25, yes. Once we're all caught up, we'll have to do the inventory. Can do. And we won't go under regular coffee. Six twenty six. Purchase 125 pounds, $1.38, gives you a total of $172.50. And then we'll stop right there because we have to go get our freight. We can go over to Supreme Coffee. Quantity uh, 626, quantity 125. Sixty. This gives you a purchase expense of two hundred, and we'll stop there till we go get our freight. Our next uh, is the delivery from Atlas Coffee Importers from Freightline. Total amount is $62.50 cash on delivery. So I put the $62.50 in the credit for checking and I divided that and got $31.25 for my regular and $31.25 for my spring coffee, so my debits. $40 
before I went to my notes, I went to my check registry. So I need a check number. <coughs> Date's going to be 626, check number 1526, for the amount of 6250 to Freightline. general journal to update my notes. And the invoice is number 672. And check number is 1526. And with that, we're finished with the general journal. No, nope, on to general ledger. Oh, nice. This way we don't forget. We want to go under assets under regular copy. It will be six twenty six. Freight costs. TJ fifteen. Debit amount of thirty one twenty five. That will give you a balance of three sixty two forty three. Three sixty two forty three. Supreme copy as well. Six twenty six. Great costs. TJ fifteen. Debit thirty one twenty five. Total should be four fifty six seventy seven. caught up we can go back to our checking date is 626 check numbers 1526 DJ fifteen for a credit of sixty two fifty should bring a balance to ten thirteen forty eight. Complete the general ledger. Our next step is the subsidiary ledger. We want to go to freight line under vendors. Six twenty six. 
delivered to our Honda Coffee, the check number 1526. Oh yeah, I forgot. This one I can't just copy it. I have to type it in. I like mine's been really good at after I type a couple of letters, it just puts it right in and I just hit enter and right arrow, up arrow and continue. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes he'll sometimes Excel will pick it up, sometimes it won't. Mine's been pretty good. I'm I'm surprised. <laughs> That's good. Um, invoice number six seventy two. Uh, why'd you just go down there? Give me one second. I get back up on page. TJ fifteen COD. Uh, invoice amount sixty two fifty. Payment of sixty two fifty zero balance. Good. And then we'll be off to inventory Philip A. All right. I like that. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> We'll go back to our 625. We got 125 pounds in mm -hmm. at a dollar 38. Our uh, the purchase price was 172.50. Our freight expense was 31 dollars and a quarter. Brings our total cost to 203 dollars and 75 cents. And this is where I'm always wrong sometimes, or most of the times. Uh, cost of item uh, running balances. 1.630, which, okay, so I'm sorry. let's start with add the 125 to the 97.25 to give you 222.25 pounds. Go to the very right column and add your 203.75 to the 158.68 to give you a total of 362.43. That should give you a new cost per item of 1.63073. All right, that's what I got. Okay. Okay, everybody. Supreme Coffee. Back to the 125 pounds we bought on the 2626. Our uh, now our freight expense is 31 dollars and a quarter, which brings our total cost to uh, 231 dollars and 25 cents. Uh, cost per item is a dollar 85, and we tack that on the 125 pounds behind our first batch at a dollar eighty five brings our total to two hundred thirty one dollars and twenty five cents. Okay. We are finished with that transaction. All right, I just double checked to make sure my inventory worksheets matches my ledgers, and they do.
Right. This is the one that I was getting confused on, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to aim for it, and y'all let me know when I'm wrong. Uh, seeing that uh, we receive uh, mugs from Old Dean Ceramic, mm -hmm. I would purchase expense, freight expense, and accounts payable. Good. All right. Oh, wait. Yes, good. Okay. Um, so, I was, I'm, I'm always second guessing myself for some reasons. That's all we do. <laughs> in the ballpark with this one we'll continue all right uh again uh crutch expense for 250 dollars freight expense uh for a hundred dollars accounts payable uh for 350 even uh, my notes are gonna say Altin Ceramic, invoice number uh, 170, uh, the terms is 1%, 10, net 30. If um, everybody's good, we'll move on to the ledger. General one. I'm good. expense 626 it's time we got a hundred mugs general journal 15 a debit of 250 which brings our running balance to eight hundred forty one dollars and twenty cents now to our freight expense Six of June, a uh, hundred mugs, general journal fifteen for a hundred dollars. They better not be broken this time. Pay too much for free. It brings our running total for two four hundred dollars. Now to our liabilities. <clears throat> Six twenty six. Invoice number one seventy. General journal. 15 
credit for 350. Brings a running balance to $2,965.21. Here, we go to our subsidiary ledger to our vendors. Altine Ceramic. Six twenty six. Got a hundred mugs. Um, I'm gonna put at two fifty, and then freight. Whoa! What's up? I'm in the wrong one. How did I get the city printers? Oh, I, thought I, was, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> okay, there you go. How much was it at, at two dollars and fifty cents? Yeah, and then freight at a hundred. Invoice, uh, one seventy. General Journal fifteen. A discount date will be. 6th of July, due date, the 26th of July, the voice amount is 250. Uh, 350 now. Oh, 350, I'm sorry. Um, which brings our current uh, accounts payable to them for uh, $1,118.96. Okay. Now I believe we're all done with that transaction. Mm, we got two more. Two more? What am I missing? Uh, did you put the uh, update the PO list? Oh, yeah, I did not. Invoice number was uh, 170 for the 100 mugs. Anything else? One more. Are we, we won't have a running uh, inventory. We're doing the end of month one, right? Right, but what what do you what do we have to do? Oh, hold up. So, uh, 
Back to the general ledger, bugs. No. No? Oh. I'm searching. Anybody? Crickets? Bugs. So. Oh, yes. Uh, <coughs> inventory. Sorry. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Oh. Right, because we're when we're looking at inventory, we're focused on nothing but purchases. Yeah. Right, so here we are, six twenty six. So six twenty six, we bought a hundred. Uh, the cost at two fifty, purchase price. Add, uh, purchase two hundred fifty dollars freight, one hundred dollars total cost. Three fifty. Uh, cost per item is going to be three dollars and fifty cents. Okay. Ooh. Now we're good. Now we're good. Good. All right, so it is close to 3 o'clock, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here, and we'll take our 20-minute break. Can I have a qu uh, ask a quick question? Go did for it. Do, did we do something on the purchase order? Yes, we, we, we updated our purchase order. Yes. Oh, can I see that, please? Yeah, of course. So purchase order right there. We just updated that. We received the inventory and we just updated the invoice number. All right. 